Oh, hello. I'm Evan, the education program leader for the National Music Center, coming at you today from Studio Bell. What's with this shape? Like a big circle being pinched in the middle. A figure eight hourglass. Why do they do that? If you ask the internet, you'll get a variety of answers. Fits better on the knee. Or it's imitating the waist and hips of a body. And every once in a while, you'll find some jargon-filled answer talking about resonant frequencies and hertz. And really, that answer is most correct. But let's see if we can strip the jargon away and figure out why this shape is best for resonance. This shape, of course, is found on many other acoustic instruments. We find very much the same design on a violin. Even in the giant version, we have a large area pinched in the middle. These are all string instruments, meaning if I pull the string and let it go, the string will then vibrate back and forth hundreds, if not thousands of times a second. This vibration makes sound waves. Sound waves are a bit hard to visualize. Can we get an animation up here? Ooh, this is nice. So in this animation, all the little black dots are air particles. On this side, we have a little gray line moving back and forth, a vibration. When it moves this way, it squishes the air particles together. When it moves that way, it pulls them apart. And these pushes and pulls move across the space. You with me so far? Vibrations cause areas of high and low pressure, and those move across the space in a sound wave. If this gray line moves further back and forth, the pressure intensifies. And then these squishes and pulls are squishier and pullier. We hear this as an increase in volume. Now the waves always move through space at the same speed, the speed of sound. So if this little gray line vibrates faster, then all the pushes and pulls will be closer together, making a higher pitch sound. The distance between the pushes and pulls are known as the wavelength. If we were to put a wall at this side, then these waves would move this way, bounce into the wall, and then start coming back. Now picture hundreds of sound waves being created every second, zipping around the space. The sound waves and the echoes are going to interact. Depending on the spacing of the waves and the size of the container, they can interact and cancel each other out, or they can interact and boost each other. When they boost, this increases the pressure and the volume goes up. Every container will favor a particular distance of sound wave, which is why when you hold a container up to your ear, you hear a certain pitch. And that is the pitch with the wavelength that resonates with the size of this object. Echoes are helping each other out. And the smaller the container, the higher the resonant pitch. So high pitch sounds tend to resonate in smaller containers because the sound waves are closer together. Whereas low pitch sounds, you need larger containers for them to resonate. So this shape will actually resonate with quite a few different notes. It resonates sound waves that want to bounce at the entire length, or it resonates with sounds with this length of the guitar. And then higher pitch sounds will resonate just with this area of the guitar. And then getting into the chaos of sound waves, most sounds contain many frequencies, so different parts of the note will resonate in different parts of the guitar simultaneously, which gives this a more complex tone. If this was just a normal circle, it would resonate with less frequencies, than with this complex shape. So I hope this better explains resonance and the shape of acoustic instruments. Go find some kind of hollow object and see if you can hear the resonant pitch. Until next time, happy exploring. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and or subscribe. Also, the National Music Center is a charity that relies on donations. So if you have the means and feel like it, please go to studiobell.ca slash donate.